Good morning and welcome to Teal House Farm and today we're pulling up a lot of our spring vegetables. Yum! last night so the ground is nice and moist and which makes it a perfect time to pick beets harvest our beets I guess you could say so Laura has been busy this morning right pulling up beets this is actually round two of beets and we have a third round in there to be ready in another week but we're going to we have a bunch that I picked last week that are just I put them in the fridge they'll last a long time in the fridge and these, I want to try packing them in sawdust and storing them in the basement, seeing if that really works as kind of an experiment. We're going old school this time with our beet harvest. So we're going to store the beets in the sawdust. And then Laura's going to try and freeze the tops to use later. behind packing it in sawdust in basement in the basement is that the sawdust will absorb the moisture um, and it help last a really long time and you're supposed to go down every you know a few weeks and check and pull out any of them that look spoiled but apparently people used to do this and they'd last all winter so we're gonna put this uh, round in the basement and see how it does see how long it lasts it's kind of experiment from what I've read, you want to pull off the green parts and leave about one to two inches of stem. And you do not want to wash them. They store better if they're a little bit dirty. better please comment below and let me know this is a first time for us this is one of those things that two generations ago they would have known what they were doing from a very young age but the knowledge has really been lost and just you know asking Google how to do it you get a lot of different opinions so if you have an experience that would help us learn please let me know this summer we're trying to do all the learning we can so that next year we'll feel really confident with how to keep our produce fresh over the winter for the beet tops I blanched them and froze them. If we're being honest, Sam does not like beet tops. I usually cook them in some bacon grease with a lot of garlic and some salt. I kind of like them. They're not my favorite. Sam doesn't like them at all, but we eat them because they're very good for you. Um, they're high in folic acid and a, and a lot of other vitamins. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, when I was pregnant, my midwife told them they were one of the best things that you could eat while you were pregnant because they were so packed um, with nutrients. So I have packs of these in kind of family-sized packs in the freezer. I blanched them in hot water for one minute and then immediately put them into some ice water and then I froze them with the water still clinging to them a little bit in these packs. 
and I'll be using them for stir frying. You can chop them up and kind of hide them inside of things. Um, everyone's going to eat them even though we aren't the, fav aren't the favorite because they're so good for you. And just like with a lot of other things with food, we try to teach our children that we don't have to love everything we eat. Sometimes we need to eat things because they're good for us and they help us grow strong and healthy. While we've had a lot of successes in the garden, I want to show you a couple things that didn't go quite right. I had to replant all my corn twice. You can see it just starting to come up and it might even be a little bit too late for it. But I figured whatever, I had seeds left. But our Great Pyrenees Archie came in twice and rolled all around in our corn and killed it all. And so we had to put up a better fence to keep him out, which is silly, because you would have think the chickens would have been the problem, and then try to replant the corn. So I don't know if we'll get any this year, it's pretty late, but I figured might as well give it another try. This used to be our potato bed, and I stopped weeding it. If you can tell, I only have about four plants left, because we got something called the Colorado beetle, or a Colorado potato beetle. It killed about every t potato plant in there over probably in only about five days. I uh, noticed that there was a problem and it took me a couple of days to figure out what the problem was. And by the time I had figured that out, it had killed about half of the crop. So I went through and I peeled off all the beetles and I put some of that diatomaceous earth down to kill the rest. And it worked, but by that time, so many of the plants were so far gone that they just gave up and died. So we're gonna have a few potatoes this year, but not very many. And the last thing that went wrong was my herb garden, which you might remember I had all these pots with different uh, herbs planted. And unfortunately, the day after we planted, we got two weeks of rain. It rained every day. And those pots just could not handle all of that rain, and they just started to flood over. I tried to cover them and, and pull them under the eaves of the house, and it was just so wet that I think the seeds just all rotted in the pots. They just couldn't get dry and so I just, I didn't get anything from that. So I put the pots away and uh, next year we're gonna try doing an herb garden in the ground because we're going to expand our garden. But that was disappointing. I was looking forward to that. So that's all we got for you today from the garden. Stay tuned, we have some exciting things coming up. We're gonna do a succession planting here in a, I don't know, end of July, so that's another month. but. We're going to get our fall crops in, and so this will be exciting for me. Uh, I'm going to try some new things. But thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to check out our blog and our Instagram, snail mail. All the information is below. We'll catch you next time.